Hello, and welcome to the second installment of our three-part laser cutter tutorial. This tutorial offers an introduction to the printing preferences of the Epilogue laser cutter and picks up where our Corel Draw tutorial ends. Before starting, please keep in mind that if you would prefer to read a transcript of this tutorial alongside screenshots, please visit the Stanford TLTL website where a copy is available. Also, please note that while this tutorial will cover the printing configuration of an Epilogue cutter, if you have another brand of laser cutter, most of the controls and settings will be quite similar. If in doubt, check your user manual to be sure. To begin, navigate to File, Print, in order to open the printing preferences. Then, choose the Epilogue Engraver from the drop-down menu and choose Preferences. This will bring up the General tab of the Epilogue dashboard. Before I start explaining the sections of the General tab, please note that the beginning of this tutorial is merely informational, and you do not need to worry about following along until we reach the Advanced tab. To begin with, let's first look at the two simplest sections, Options, and piece size. Within these sections, you should ensure that autofocus is checked, center engraving is not, and that the piece size matches the overall dimensions of your engraver. In our case, that is 24 by 18 inches, or 61 by 45.7 centimeters. In some cases, manual focus will be better than autofocus, but it is rare. For more information on such circumstances, please consult the user manual. Next, Let's move up to the job type section where we can inform the laser cutter whether we'd like to engrave, cut, or both. If you viewed the previous tutorial, you will recognize the raster and vector terms we added to our cheat sheet. As you might remember, a raster job will result in an engraving, while a vector job will result in a cut. Not surprisingly, a combined job includes a bit of both. Next, we will talk about the resolution and raster sections, which together control the raster parts of our image. Looking at the resolution section first, we see a slider that controls DPI, or dots per inch. Much like standard printers, the higher the DPI, the sharper the image. However, it is important to note that a doubling of DPI results in a quadrupling of time needed to engrave. Therefore, for test prints, it can be useful to reduce the DPI to speed up the printing, whereas for final work, we recommend a DPI of 600. While you may be tempted to try 1200, most people can seldom notice a difference between 600 and 1200, so it is often not worth the extra time. Moving on to raster settings, you will notice two sliders which control the speed and power of the laser. These are very important controls as together they determine how deep the laser is able to penetrate your material. To better understand these controls, think of the analogy of a block of wax which you are trying to melt. If you have a low power device such as a match and you move it quickly across the wax, you will not melt much of the block. However, if you have a high power device such as a blowtorch and you move it very slowly, it will bore a very deep hole. Depending on the hardness and thickness of your material, the engraver will require different combinations of speed and power for clean, precise engraving. Moving on to the next control, engrave direction determines whether the laser engraves from top down or bottom up. In most cases, it's best to choose bottom up because the vacuum sucks air from bottom to top and this way the debris will not be sucked into the freshly made cuts. The last raster setting is dithering, which controls how the engraver processes colors and shades of gray. While standard works for basic black and white jobs, the last three in the list, Floyd Steinberg, Jarvis, and Stuckey, often provide better results for complex images such as photos. The last section of the general tab is vector settings, which controls the cuts within our piece. In this section, we again see speed and power controls, which function identically to the controls above. Additionally, the vector setting includes a frequency control, which controls how fast the laser will flash while it is cutting. Different materials require different frequency settings. Acrylic, for example, uses a setting of 5000, while wood or paper uses 500. Please refer to the install profiles or the laser cutter documentation to determine this number, since an incorrect setting could lead to excessive burning or ignition of the material. The last controls in the vector section are the vector sorting and the frequency automatic checkboxes. For our purposes, vector sorting should be left on, while frequency automatic can be left off, since all it does is set the frequency to its maximum of 5000. While you now hopefully have an understanding of how the controls in the general tab function, you may be wondering how to determine which settings to use. To do this, follow along as I proceed to the Advanced tab. Upon arriving, you will see a list of printing profiles for a number of common materials. As you will see, not every material is covered, but you can use the installed profiles as starting points. Additionally, if you're using an obscure material that is not similar to one of the pre-installed profiles, try searching the web for suggestions, but be sure to find values that match the wattage of your cutter. In our case, we are going to use the pre-installed matte board profile since it's the material most closely related to cardboard. To do this, select the matte board profile and then choose Load. After doing so, return to the General tab, 
where you'll notice it's been populated with the map board settings. It is important to note that when you load a profile, it overwrites all of your previous settings on the general tab. Therefore, before proceeding, quickly check whether the page size or other options you set previously are still correct. In order to alter the map board profile for cardboard, the only setting we need to change are the raster and vector power settings because cardboard is thinner than map board and will not need as much power to cut. Therefore, change the raster power to 20% and the vector power to 35%. When you are finished, choose OK, which will return you to Corel Draw's print dialog box. At this point, if you click print, your file will be sent to the laser cutter for engraving. Before doing so, however, please watch part 3 of our tutorial series, which explains how to prepare the hardware to receive your file. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in part three.